If you have a vintage cam like this or like this that records to either tape or CD, toss these away because this thing right here allows you to record directly to an SD card. That means it turns these vintage cameras instantly into digital cameras. So this thing is essentially a portable capture card. If you've transferred footage from your tapes or CDs before, you've probably used a form of this to get it over to your computer. As you can see here, it has red, white, and yellow cables that you plug in. Then depending on what type of camera you have, you'll have a different cable to plug in here. For this camera, we're using the S-Video cable, I believe it's called, and we're gonna plug it right into the front. Now, when you turn on the capture card and also the camera, you can see whatever the camera sees shows up on this screen right here. And then you take this micro SD card and plug it into the capture card itself. But now our issue is it looks like this. So what I did is I put Velcro on this side and Velcro on the bottom of the camera. That way you can stick it together. I then took some Velcro and Velcroed the loose cables to this hand strap here. And we have a portable digital vintage camera. And then you can start and stop recording by pressing this red button. The only setting that I changed was turning off the timestamp so there was an annoying text popping up. This capture card and way of recording is a total game changer for these vintage cameras. I'll have the capture card, the cables that you might need, and the Velcro linked down below. So if you want the same setup as I have, I'll have that linked down below. One thing that's really nice about the digital capture card that I got is it comes with a four gigabyte micro SD card, which might not seem like a lot, but when you're recording footage of that quality, it can go a really long way. I just got back from a trip to Canada and I was recording a lot and I think I only used like one or two gigabytes of that four. But my absolute favorite thing about this capture card is the fact that it records separate files. So before I transfer the tape or the CD over and it would be all in one massive file. This, as soon as you open the micro SD card, you can click around and it will pop up each individual footage. That way you can easily see which clip is the clip you want without having to sit through and watch all of the footage by itself. My only real complaint with the capture card is it records in a file format that you can't directly import into Premiere Pro. So you do have to convert it before. I'll show you my process in converting the footage. That way you guys don't have to figure it out for yourself. So let's say we wanted these three clips from our SD card and bring them into Premiere Pro. First, what I normally do is just copy them into a folder onto my computer. That way they're not on the micro SD card anymore. And I like naming it something like pre-convert, that way I know it's the footage before it was converted. So let's go ahead and paste that into there. And now I use a software called Handbrake to convert it. It's free and I'll have it linked down below. I just drag that whole folder into Handbrake, it'll process. If it's your first time using Handbrake, you might have to go to Tools, Preferences, Output Files, and choose a path for it to go, that way it can export properly. And then if you have multiple files like me, click this little arrow on Add to Queue, and click Add All. Now you'll see the number right here next to Q is three. And then I just go to dimensions and make sure everything's correct. The aspect ratio, it did record to 640 by 480, which is a four by three aspect ratio. Depending on the camera you use, it will be a different aspect ratio, but just make sure it matches whatever you actually recorded to. That way it's not messing up the aspect ratio of your footage. And then go ahead and click Start Q. That will pretty much just run your footage through Handbrake and convert it into a file format that you can use in Premiere Pro. I chose the MP4 file format, so that's what I would recommend. While we're waiting for that to convert, I'll show you the process of using this camera. It's very similar. You plug the three red, white, and yellow into the video capture device. But instead on this camera, we plug the yellow into here and then either left or right audio into the camera itself. If you wanna get a splitter, you can do that as well. That way you can get left and right audio, but you can also just use it as one audio channel. It's not that big of a deal. You can change it in Premiere Pro after. If you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I love the vintage and kind of retro aesthetic. And my favorite feature in these cameras is the night shot option. I got this really cool shot of a Rolex at night, kind of like with the crown back here. And I just think it looks so cool. If your footage is four by three like me, you can also scale the width to make it stretched a little bit. Some people like that style or some people like the black bar style. You can scale it up also so it's just not stretched at all. And a really popular aesthetic right now is just layering multiple video layers on top of each other to kind of give like a collage kind of style effect to add texture and then also use your high quality camera to make the video a little bit more intriguing. Hopefully I was able to put you on and make the process of using these vintage cameras just a little bit easier. That way you can incorporate it into your workflow 
level up your videos, charge more, and just enjoy the process a little bit more. I'll have all the capture cards and everything that I use, and then also some other builds linked down in the description. So if you're interested, click through there. It's an affiliate link and it supports the channel. If you made it all the way to the end, drop a comment about making it all the way to the end. I really do appreciate it. But that's all I got for you guys on this one. Peace.